Weber 64 present. A play toy that video review. Stay back and enjoy the show. Hey there once again, welcome to another Lemon 64 play guide and review. In this episode we'll be taking a look at the Monty Mole series created by Gremlin Graphics and that began on the ZX Spectrum machine coded by Peter Harrop originally and that was converted to the Commodore 64 by Anthony Crowther in 1984. So this game contains 21 screens and you can see the ZX Spectrum version there, the original Peter Harrop version is very easy to play and it's very easy to figure out what the player is supposed to do. So very colourful graphics there and you can see the player does play as Monty Mole. So now let's take a look at the Commodore 64 version and this, as I say, was converted from the original by a certain Anthony Crowder. He started with Potty Pigeon Gremlin in 1984 and then moved on to great games like Captive and Captain Planet. So let's see what he made of this conversion. From the start we can see the graphics are completely different on the Commodore 64 than on the ZX Spectrum and at first glance it looks like a completely different game. This time we don't have a 21 screen maze but we do have a very scrolly landscape there and a very bland grey background. The aim is to figure out where we are going and on the way to collect those items but it's not easy as you can see and we only get one life in this game and that takes us all the way back so let's try again we can jump by pressing the fire button and you can see we don't actually play as Monty Mole we actually play as a miner in this game and if we touch the big miner we'll die that's reminiscent of the ZX Spectrum version but that's the only similarity that I can find and yes, when we walk through this miner, it will take on damage. At least we do have damage in this game, and all the other Monty Mole clone spin-offs didn't have damage, and it was a one-hit kill. So let's avoid those things, and well, falling actually decreases our energy, and that wastes another life. Surely falling from a great height shouldn't waste energy, because we are a miner, surely we should be used to these caverns, and it shouldn't be so hard. But you can see this game is completely different from the Peter Harrop original and yes we can get ourselves out of those situations so let's see it doesn't seem to be any way up there but let's see if we can find our way down and through this level you'll find messages from Anthony Crowther will appear on the bottom and around the game and so if we can time this well enough by climbing onto those vines and that's a kind of a Jack the Nipper kind of a philosophy climbing onto vines and over ravines but you can see there hello my name is Tony telling you that this game is very hard indeed and even Montezuma's Revenge was easier than this and actually had more play fun value so that's my life over yet again on the original Monty Mole or Wanted Monty Mole as it was originally called on the ZX machine but Monty Mole there on the Commodore 64, that's the very first time I've ever seen that game in my entire life and it's probably going to be the last time as well, so let's move on. The second game in the Monty Mole series was actually Monty's Innocent, which is yet another ZX exclusive game, and then after that the third one in the series was Monty on the Run. You can see the loading screen there has a nice advert for Zap64, and Zap actually rated this game 90% in November 1985, with Computer and Video Games magazine giving this title 100%. This was originally developed once again by Peter Harrop on the ZX Spectrum machine, and the C64 conversion was done by Jason Perkins, and the graphics were by Mark Rogers. The game also features terrific music created by Rob Hubbard. title screen we can also select five escape items from 21 which appear scrolling there on the bottom of the screen 
and unfortunately at the time it was almost impossible to work out the order and the correct items but what we need is actually the jetpack, the rope, the book, the gas mask and the barrel and once we have all those items then we can progress into the game and again it's only now that we have the internet that people have put those escape kit items online for us to follow otherwise it's not obvious at all jumping into the game the music continues so you can see there we need pixel perfect jumps even on the first screen otherwise we'll die straight away luckily we have five lives in this game but unfortunately all the screens are torture and it will take very dexterous controls and mastery of this game to get anywhere. You can see the coins there, I think there are 50 coins or a number of those to collect and they will just give us bonus points. And you can see various items there to avoid, unfortunately we cannot kill anything in this game but we cannot climb down those ladders either it appears and look at that squashed to death there by one of those collapsible columns. So on these screens, yes, there are various routes that we can take around these levels, but experience and trial and error is the order of the day to master each one of these screens and to get those pixel timed to perfection. Climbing down this ladder, this is actually a very difficult room to get out of, so I wouldn't recommend players enter this room, or these two rooms should I say, unless they really want to collect all the coins. And you can see a bun there on the bottom. Yes, fairy cakes can be collected for extra score. But that's my game over. Let's enter our name on the high score table and let's press fire and try again. And this time, let's try to ignore those coins and let's try to get further in this game so yes you have to time those things and sometimes things move at random so you have to be patient you have to learn otherwise you die the terrific music you can hear in the background was inspired by the devil's gallop originally created by charles williams a uk composer so if you can find the devil's gallop there on youtube then you might find the inspiration to this music and that is certainly very well done. On the Commodore 64 there, we just discovered Sinclair C5, and yes, there are a few Sinclair references in this game, and the cake there will give us more bonus points, but don't be collecting that dynamite, because that will destroy us on contact, and that's actually in the manual, but that's one of those things, again, that if you haven't read the manual, you have to learn those things the hard way. And the hard way continues now as we try to avoid these things and time those jumps and swing toys and like from one line to another to try to escape this hellhole. And yes, pits of death in this game aren't very uncommon, but luckily it is possible to get ourselves out of there with a little time and a little trial and error. next room we find one of our items that we need and I've no idea what that does because it doesn't restore our health but you can see there is no way back there and we cannot leave the room there we cannot climb that platform and ascend onto the higher levels which means we must have to ascend using that cloud or whatever it is that is rising there and yet again that requires pixel perfect timing and to get beyond the pack there Unfortunately, I failed. I originally had this game on the Gremlin Classics Volume 1 Classics Collection, and that came in a very large green and red collection there, four tapes. And the best thing on that collection was Bounder, and it certainly wasn't this, because as you can tell, I haven't figured out how to play it. I didn't spend too much time playing it, because this game feels rather unfair player dies they realize that the game is trying to make them die and unfairnesses in this game really pile up. The only not unfair element is that we can get a high score there very easily just by collecting a few items. So that's Monty on the Run released in 1985 
And then two years later, they followed that in 1987 with Alvide Say Monty. And the music was created once again by a certain Mr. Rob Hubbard, and he was actually helped by Ben Dalglish. But you can see some of those platforms are actually trampolines, and if we press fire on those, we'll do a series of jumps and we'll probably get killed. So even on the very first start screen there in Gibraltar, we are struggling. And when we exit that room, we have to be very, very soft on the controls, otherwise we'll run straight into one of those collapsible barriers, and that column crushes us flat onto the floor. So we can take multiple routes through these rooms, and there are actually 80 screens in this game, so I think there were at least 70 in Monty on the Run, so it has had a hike in screens, and in this game we have to make our way around Europe, we start in Gibraltar and we make our way through France over the Pyrenees and we can also visit Germany and we can also find Italy and Greece there. These purple travellers checks you can see me collecting at the moment just give us a bonus score and some of those aren't easy to get to. In fact some of those might not even be possible to get to but you can see I bounced straight on the edge there otherwise I would have got killed moving on to the next screen. So yet again, this game is very difficult, even if you know what you are doing, and I'm actually avoiding those bottles because they will reverse my control, and you don't lose any energy for falling from high levels either, but you can see collecting two of those bottles will reverse our controls, and collecting the second one, well if I hold that joystick in the opposite direction that will freeze the way I walk, but as soon as I release that, that will kill me because I cannot survive touching unfortunately those tennis balls but one tip to remember is to collect the white rabbit and that will give us an extra life so that puts us up there and we should be on six by now but we're actually on three having died mercilessly already periodically the character will roll and break down on the floor there and if that is directly into an enemy then you'll die and the game gives you absolutely no warning that the character is about to go crazy it just happens and you just have to deal with it on this section we can simply push up on the controller to get onto those hooks and then jump and try to make this top level and yes it is possible to do that but if you miss it yet again I died so let's try our best to carry on below this room again is the rest of Spain and you can see Spain there in the bottom corner but the room I'm trying to get to is this one and this is the Spanish airport and from here we can fly to France those rocks are hot and our character will jump up there at random so that enables us to get to those things but jumping on those hot rocks there and giving the player something else to think about on top of the already difficult to master controls well that just makes the job a little harder but in this room it is possible to get to that airport desk and I've unfortunately forgotten how to do it but it is possible by using the rocks on the left and jumping across there. So tactics have to be used. Let's see if I remember how to do it. Otherwise I'm going to get myself killed in the process. And again, thank God that we don't lose any energy by taking those long drops. And we cannot go up this way because there is a Yeti in the way. So we have to fly over to France, otherwise we'll get killed. The easiest thing is to stand right on that corner and then pressing the control key or the alt key, I think it is c64 emulation on a pc then we can fly to france you may have noticed that we managed to find an air ticket a yellow air ticket on the levels before and that will allow us to gain that air transport if we fail to collect an air ticket then unfortunately no pressing of the alt will get us into the air and we have to go back and find those obviously air supply tickets are unlimited supply in this game so you'll be able to fly around indefinitely and that's a shame, but this 3D aspect really does increase the player's tension, gives them an extra level, and all we have to do is to fly behind those planes, and we can blow those out of existence. You can see, returning, we managed to find France, into Paris. Climbing the Eiffel Tower there gives us free air tickets, but you notice that when we appeared on that screen, it gives us precious little time, get out of the way of those guys and you saw I failed to make it and if we collide with yet another one of those tourist airport desks then we can fly to another destination 
and below there, there is one of the items that we need. And that is actually the flowers which we must take to Amsterdam. But we found the Mona Lisa, and the Mona Lisa has to be taken to Italy. And you'll find various objects. The football, which we shall see later on, has to be returned to Italy. The tools are used to fix the lift up into Austria, the ski lift. The wine has to be taken to West Germany, which actually crashed my version of this game when I had this on the original tape so it was impossible to complete the game. The bacon has to be taken to Prague, the steering wheel has to be taken to France or rather Monaco and the flowers that you find have to be taken to Amsterdam and again the tulips to Italy and the Mona Lisa that we've just found has to go to Italy but you can see I died and that means we're going to start the level all over again and this time let's rush through the level and try and find some more of those items. Once all the items have been collected and taken to their relevant destinations, then that will award us extra points and that will also build up a special island. Yes, the aim of the game is to retire to an island which lies off the coast of Greece called Montos. And if we collect all those items, then Montos will be available to us. And if we enter that island at any other point, then that's a no way back which is another unfairness in this game. But you can see, let's take the southern route, and by descending through Spain, then we can actually rise yet again on those suction cups. And by pressing up on the controller, we can simply jump up onto those and move across and through the level, which is a great feature. And here, we managed to find the football, and again, we need to take that to Juventus in Italy. That will give us an extra prize, and more headway as far as gaining our island and access to that Montos, but I'll not collect that wine because that will make us drunk. So there are different things in this game, it is more comical, the Monty on the run is certainly easier, and there's more things to do, but again, the aspect of timing those things to absolute perfection is not lost on me, and it's difficult enough to get out of those rooms, because if you mistime it, then find yourself frustrated. The Commodore 64 version is credited once again to Peter Harrop and Sean Hollingworth with extra help by Chris Carey and the graphics were drawn by Steve Carey and Terry Lloyd. The review scores were mixed after the amazing scores that Zap gave Monty on the run they only gave this 46% in July 1987. The Commodore Force gave this 72. The Commodore user gave it 80. Your Commodore and CMVG both gave this 90% and the current lemon score is actually 7 out of 10 for our VDSA Monty, so that's the average score. But you can see some things are hard and some things aren't even possible. Like you can see there that it should be possible to collect whatever item that is, but having done so we're about to die. So yes, even though this game is a little easier than Monty on the run, it's still unfair and I've only ever managed to complete this with the infinite lives cheat. So let's not bother using that, or let's just die. Three years later, Gremlin Graphics returned with a yet another part of the Monty Mole series, and this could be called part five, after the other four that we've mentioned already. And Impossible was created by Core Design, which was actually the same guys that was part of Gremlin, but they split and made core design. But it wasn't Peter Harrop and Sean Hollingworth this time, it was by other coders. And the music, once again, was created by Ben Darkleash. You can see in Impossible, we actually have five different levels that we can choose. Four of those can be chosen from the title screen. By far the easiest one is the Orient, which you can see me trying to play at the moment. But look at that, even the very first enemy there can't be killed by mortal man and it really takes human effort to get the coin there that you actually need to collect and that will reveal a shop later on and you can buy items with those coins. But this game is yet again easier than all the other Monty games put together and you'll find that our Monty Mole character is very easy to control and even though these enemies sometimes are difficult and it's sometimes infuriating there when you can't hit those things dead on but we do have an energy bar in this game and we can pick up cans of worms and that will recharge our energy but you can see the 
monsters and the items to avoid there are pretty much easier and there are certainly no rooms and dead ends and no way backs in this game it's basically a run and gun and sometimes you can do both and sometimes it's just a case of balancing on those platforms you can see the guy there the guy with the camera will actually wipe our energy and you can't actually destroy that guy so you just have to keep running and keep walking along and soup power there soup will actually increase our firepower and we can have up to three soup power which will increase our normal kick and also our weapons and so you are witnessing the very first grade laser weapon yes we can actually destroy various enemies in this game not 100 percent of those enemies but many of those and again it gives us the coins so that we can collect extra items the aim of this game is to get to the end of each level and destroy the end of level boss and then destroying all four bosses will reveal level five and the core design team had a big hit with rick dangerous 2 before this game and so you can see various similarities between this and rick dangerous 2 particularly at the map selection screen and obviously this is a scrolling game rather than a flick screen game but again we can pick up those items and get that extra energy back so it's an easy level we can actually survive for a number of screens and I have actually completed this although again not without the cheat because even though this is the easiest level the rest are very hard indeed you see the graphics there are well drawn on Commodore 64 and are comparable to the Amiga and the sound is just as good as well by pulling back on the stick here that enters the shop and our mole friend will be able to give us some more energy there but we can't afford anything else including the various top-ups there. We can actually increase the size of our energy bar as well if we have 200 coins at that point. But we didn't, so we can't. We take various routes through these stages. And this is probably the very first and the last Monty game which doesn't require us to collect items and move those around in a landscape like a dizzy game. Now all we have to do is to get to the end of that level and destroy the boss and that's it. So there's no hanging around in this game, so no timing things to pixel perfectness most of the time. And sometimes that happens, but most of the time we just carry on. So let's collect the worms, and even the Bruce Lee character there has a very nice animation. And he has a very nice high kick if you let him kick, but let's blow him away. And thanks to the energy, we don't get killed straight away if we end up wandering into that water and again the laser weapons make our progress fairly easy so this game managed to garner 54 percent from powerplay magazine cvg gave it 64 percent zap only gave it 69 percent and the game machine gave this game 72 percent on the commodore 64 saying that it wasn't as interesting as the other monty games but i think it certainly has things on offer and if you want run and gun action and sometimes platform running good action is the way to go on the 64 then you won't be a far let down with this it's certainly easy to get into but unfortunately the first level is pretty damn difficult and level three and four are very very difficult and again there's only this second level which gives us enough energy to survive game is very well sounded, very well graphically drawn, but the playability could have been tweaked on some of those later levels to make those easier, and it's only this level which is actually easy to complete, like I say, so even that isn't a pushover. The Monty games in general are very difficult on the Commodore 64, no matter what Monty game it might be, and unfortunately the player will have to dedicate their time and their patience, otherwise they won't get anywhere. And I only managed to complete, I'll be really saying Monty, when I managed to find a tape which didn't crash when I took the wine over to West Germany. And when I finally did manage to find a tape which worked, I had to use the cheat to get there. Meanwhile, on the Commodore 64, we found the end of level 2 boss. And because we have the laser with level 3 upgrade, that's actually give us homing missiles. And so the Amiga version is very much harder than this, but on the 64, all we need to do is keep pressing fire. Eventually that guy will die, taking a 
us on to another level selection screen. So thank you once again for viewing another review by LemonTube64. Hope to see you again sometime soon.